Hi everyone, I am Dr. Babita and in this video we will learn about Marcus Gunn jaw winking phenomena. This is a child with left eye Marcus Gunn jaw winking phenomena. In the resting position, you can see that the left eye is drooped, there is two cysts. But as she moves her jaw, the left eyelid also moves up with the movement of the jaw and this is known as jaw winking phenomena. Marcus Gunn jaw winking phenomena was first described by Scottish ophthalmologist Robert Marcus Gunn in the year 1883. As we can see in the video, it is characterized by ptosis along with synkinetic elevation of the upper eyelid and movement of the jaw. So what is synkinesis? When two or more muscles that are innervated by different nerves or by two different branches of the same nerve, when they contract together, then that phenomenon is known as synkinesis. So in Marcus Gunn jaw winking phenomenon, when the muscle that is involved in the movement of the jaw, when it contracts simultaneously, at the same time, the muscle that is involved in lid elevation, that muscle also contracts. So a synkinetic movement is occurring between the two muscles, although they are supplied by different nerves. Another name of this phenomena is pterygoid levator synkinesis, because pterygoid muscle, namely the lateral pterygoid contracts and moves the jaw to the opposite side and levator muscle contracts to elevate the lid. Yet another name of this phenomenon is trigeminal oculomotor synkinesis because trigeminal nerve supplies the pterygoids and oculomotor nerve supplies the levator palpebrae superioris. Since we are discussing nomenclature, it is quite interesting to note that the term jaw winking is a misnomer. This phenomenon is wrongly named as jaw winking because winking refers to closing of the eye. But here the lid rises with jaw movement, the eye opens further. Moving on, let's talk about the etiopathogenesis of Marcus Gunn phenomena or MGP. Most cases are congenital, although acquired forms have also been reported. They have been seen due to complications of surgery or trauma or infection or pontine tumors. Most cases are unilateral, frequently occurring on the left side, although bilateral cases have also been reported. MGP is almost always associated with ptosis, although there have been reports of MGP in eyes with normal lid position. In patients with congenital ptosis, almost 2-13% to of the cases have MGP. MGP can be associated with other ophthalmological conditions as well, like strabismus, which is seen in about 50-60% to of patients with MGP, most common forms of strabismus are superior rectus palsy and double elevator palsy. Patients with MGP can also have anisometropia and amblyopia. It is important to note that the cause for underlying amblyopia is not MGP. It occurs secondary to strabismus or anisometropia or due to obstruction of the visual axis in severe ptosis. Other reported associations are morning glory anomaly and Dewin's retraction syndrome. Very rarely, systemic anomalies have also been reported among MGP patients. These include cleft lip, cleft palate and renal calculi. In some bilateral MGP cases, Chart syndrome was also reported. Inheritance, MGP is almost always sporadic, but sometimes an irregular autosomal dominant inheritance pattern has also been reported. And of course, it is an involuntary condition, the patient cannot control it. The jaw winking phenomena can be triggered by stimulation of the lateral pterygoid muscle. The movements that can elicit MGP are chewing, sucking, lateral mandibular movement, smiling, sternocleidomastoid muscle contraction, protruding tongue, valsalva maneuver and even breathing. It is most commonly detected in infancy when the baby is feeding and the eyelid moves along with the sucking movements of the mouth. A characteristic feature of this phenomena is that the raising of the affected eyelid is synchronous and proportionate to the movement of the jaw. In a few patients, the synchronic movement has been documented between the internal pterygoid and levator palpebrae superioris muscle. In such individuals, the eyelid elevates on closing the mouth and clenching the teeth. The pathogenesis of MGP is not clearly understood. In the literature, there are two main theories. The first school says that there occurs an aberrant connection between the mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve and the oculomotor nerve. Proprioceptors in the pterygoid muscle send anomalous impulses to the midbrain in the region of the oculomotor nucleus because an abnormal connection might have developed in utero between the oculomotor nucleus and the nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and thus the LPS gets stimulated. The second school of thought advocates the release hypothesis. 
it says that mgp occurs due to unmasking of a primitive pathway there exists a primitive pathway in which oculomotor nucleus and trigeminal nucleus have aberrant interconnections but during phylogenetic development this pathway got extinguished but in mgp patients this primitive reflex gets released it becomes active because of intrauterine trauma or some unknown cause resulting in syngenetic lid and jaw movements so how do we treat patients with mgp for that let's first learn how mgp is graded we follow dowse's grading of jaw winking phenomena mild mgp is when lid excursion is less than 2 mm moderate mgp is lid excursion of 2 to 5 mm and severe mgp is lid excursion of more than 5 mm surgical intervention is indicated when the ptosis or jaw winking is cosmetically significant or causing amblyopia mild mgp like you can see in the left eye of this patient requires no surgical intervention in fact patients with jaw winking sometimes learn a type of adaptation in which they keep their jaw in a specific position which keeps their eyelid uplifted thus minimizing the amount of ptosis this is known as habitual ptosis phenomena during patient examination relaxation of this muscle contraction leads to an unmasking of the true ptosis it might even be possible that patients of mgp without ptosis are actually hiding their ptosis by keeping their jaw in a particular position so in patients with mild mgp and ptosis ptosis alone may need to be corrected using a technique which is appropriate for the degree of ptosis for mild ptosis the procedures of choice can be either facinella servat procedure or lps resection lps resection does not eliminate the jaw winking it only corrects ptosis and it may even worsen the cosmetic appearance due to aggravation of mgp and increasing the scleral show post operatively for moderate to severe mgp with fair to poor lps action we can either do bilateral lps excision with bilateral frontalis sling or unilateral lps excision with bilateral frontalis sling or unilateral lps excision with unilateral frontalis sling the sling material used could be either facial lata or silicon sling the preferred procedure is unilateral lps excision with bilateral sling because it is less destructive as we are excising the lps of only one side and it provides better cosmesis the reason why we do bilateral sling even when the ptosis is unilateral is in order to give better cosmesis in down gaze for example you can see this patient in whom unilateral sling surgery has been done on the right side for correction of ptosis so the lid position is looking symmetric and cosmetically acceptable in primary position in both the eyes however in down gaze the lid positions are very different the sling in right eye has induced lid lag in down gaze and this might not be cosmetically acceptable to many patients there are two differential diagnoses of mgp inverse mgp and marinamat syndrome inverse mgp refers to the drooping of the eyelid with jaw movement which means that as opposed to mgp in which the eyelid elevates with jaw movement in inverse mgp the eyelid droops with jaw movement the ptosis increases this occurs because of an inhibitory trigeminal oculomotor nerve synchinesis stimulation of trigeminal nerve inhibits oculomotor nerve marinamat syndrome is characterized by involuntary and fleeting eye closure when the mouth opens due to overaction of orbicularis oculi muscle MAS is more of an aberrant facial nerve regeneration where sprouts of facial nerve supply more than one muscle so there occurs ptosis in cases of inverse mgp and blepharospasm in marinamat syndrome so that is all for this video on mgp i tried to cover the topic in its entirety and i hope you liked it please like this video and share it with your friends and colleagues if you found it useful and please subscribe to my channel to support free education thank you very much